How does it feel to have uh, an actual division around you and, you know, opponents who have built up win streaks rather than just fighters brought in here and there, maybe from another weight class like the UFC did? And how important is that to your legacy? You know, for me, I always think in my mind, it's I'm number contender one always. You know, I, 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 I'm going to fight to get my title. And I always think this way. I think this way motivate me every time, every morning when I wake up and... You know, I, I, I don't push too much pressure on me. And I think the pressure I put in the gym every day and be prepared for the day to fight. You uh, were keeping an eye on Sinead Kavanaugh uh, on her fight. Uh, she mentioned that she saw your name pop up in the YouTube prelims. Uh, is that something you do? Have you been kind of scouting the rest of the division in Bellator? You know, I like to watch all the fights and they make me very happy. Bellator have the full division, a lot of girls in my division. You just have to keep your eye on the end and keep training. Giancarlo? What have you seen out of the other women's fighters in Bellator? You no, know, the one thing that makes me really happy is the real 145 pound. You know, I mean, I always fight for this. I always, you know, the beginning of my career is I always believe in the 145 division and it makes me very happy you know, Scott Coker is signing all the girls 145, and you're going to be great if you're going to be great fights. Scott Coker has been open to working with other promotions, like we saw with Ryzen uh, back in uh, December. Uh, is there a fight that you'd uh, like to do over there? Like, is there an opponent there that would interest you? You know, this is very cool. I think he, I have a dream fight in Japan. I never have the opportunity to fight in Japan. And they opened the, 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 the fight, girls fight over there like a couple of years. And for me, you know, if I have the opportunity over there, for sure, this is one thing very nice Bellator does with another show. This is make the, the best fight, you know, to promote can do. Doesn't matter where it's at. This is very cool. Gareth, go ahead. One shouldn't mention a lady's age, yeah, but you're 35. I think you can do it when someone's a fighter. Does it motivate you more that you're a target for everybody out there? Uh, you know, for me, I think I, I'm very, I'm very stubborn, like for learning every day. And even, even if I win for a long time, I always like to learn and learn and learn for getting improve my game. And for me, I feel very blessed and be where I'm at, you know, but it's a little hard work. It's not just uh, something happened the, the one the, the one day, but, you know, a couple of years of working really hard and training and just motivate me, motivate me, keep, keep improving my game. When I spoke to Scott Coker last time, and I spoke to him about this in Paris as well last weekend, they are open to you crossing over for a fight with Katie Taylor as well. Does that fire burn in you to go and have a boxing match with a big world champion in boxing? For now, I'm a Foxy Arlene Blanco, but you know, everybody knows my dream. I would like to do one boxing fight. And I never choose my opponent, you know, I'm going to let it for my manager and Scott Coker decide this. But you know, for me, I was going to keep training, but for sure, Thursday, Arlene Blank first. John Eric. Okay, Chris. So I know you're not looking past Arlene, but I wanted to just ask you a little bit about uh, Julia Budd and uh, Kat Zingano. They both had wins recently. You know, just what were your thoughts on them and, and what they've done recently? No, I watched the fight. I think, you know, Julia did great. She's got the win. And, you know, Kat Zingano for a long time, she's, she's you know, no, the last fight she had, she's long time no fight, the last time she had. Shouldn't have the opportunity to fight too much because they have a kick in the eyes. And but you know, I'm happy then come on that she's coming back and fighting and she's a great opponent for for Julia Bud. Donna, go ahead. I, I, I heard you talking about the, the potential of doing a boxing fight. I know you're very focused on Thursday night's bout, but has there ever been any discussions between your team and Eddie Hearn about potentially fighting Katie Taylor? You know, for now I think uh, we didn't talk to him, but I think maybe Scott Cook talked to him. But you know, I always let these things my manager, you know, Adi, Atari talk to you, decide what's the, the next. But really, guys, I really would, I would like you guys asking for me if, about Erling Blanco, about my next fight, because I'm really gonna answer about mm -hmm. Erling Blanco. But uh, for sure, it's my dream doing the boxing fight. And if it be Kat Taylor, Katie uh, Taylor, the next one. We're going to be great, but for Fox now, Arlene Blank. I have to do one step each side, time. Okay, speaking of Arlene Blank, on the, the division as a whole, do you believe that you are in the best 145 pound division in the world? Uh, I know it's all the girls on 45 pounds. You know, I don't see another organization have all the 145 pounds, maybe have two or three, but you know, here we have in Bellator all the girls. You're a big favorite against Arlene Blanco. What have you been seeing in her game that, that uh, makes you, what, what are you seeing in her game that you need to nullify 
to be able to uh, to get the the win and defend your title for the first time. No, I watched a couple of fights of her. She's tough and she she li- likes to strike. She's you no know, have two times uh, world champion boxing and you know, but it's MMA, mixed martial arts, and this is you know I, I like to do the mixed martial arts. It's gonna be a great fight. How the pandemic affected her training. For me, you know, the beginners are very hard because I was doing my camps in South Africa too, and then I have the opportunity to go to South Africa. But I knew after Julia Bud, I would like to be focusing in boxing training. And I was really training boxing because I was thinking going to be the next boxing fight. But the pandemic delayed a little bit. And, but I knew I was going to fight MMA in October. You just, I start training in Kings MMA. It's like two miles from my house. And over there, I have a Every week, we have a lot of fighters have a fight, and we continue train over there. And of course, you 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 everybody get a test, they get a clear for you know be safe and train. But I will skip training. Do you think Arlene Blanco is a really tough opponent coming in off three straight wins? You know, I think she's deserved a fight for the title. You know, she's coming to good wins and. I believe, I believe if Scott Coco puts his fight with me, for sure it's a great match. Santiago, you've had such a beautiful career thus far. And when I see you fight, I can yes. clearly see the best cyborg is yet to come. Like you are improving every fight. I really love that. Uh, the fans really want to see you fight against Kayla Harris. Is that a fight that you want to do in Bellator somewhere down the line? You know, I never choose my opponents. I, I always like to try be ready for everyone. And especially for now, we have to train and improve our game and be ready for anybody. You know, all whole my career, I never choose my opponents. I always be ready and say yes. Dan? Uh, Chris, how would you compare your professional happiness in Bellator compared to some of your more recent stints in other organizations? And how much perhaps does your relationship with Scott help? Uh, the first thing, you know, I think I think people can see how happy I am. I think people can see uh, when follow me how the happy I happy be with Bellator. Uh, the first thing for me, I was uh, I, I really the first thing in my life is respect, you know, and respect and be healthy healthy relationship with people around you. And the work with Scott Cook and in Bellator for me, it is very nice. I've, I worked with him before at the Strike Force, and when I start to work with Bellator, the first time I see everyone, everybody screams, "Welcome home!" Because you know the most people here work with Bellator, work before in Strike Force, and I'm really happy to be here. You know, people can see every day, you know, how happy I am, and very excited, and motivated to do every fight here. Do you, do you sense they value you more as a, as a person, as a competitor, than just another cog in a machine? You know, I feel like uh, Scott Coker, is, he's really appreciate every fighter. You know, you didn't see him blame any fighter in, you know, in, in the media. You don't see that. You don't, you don't see that then try damage the brand the fighters. You know, it's a partner, partnership, you know, both to work together. And this, the, the, this is the thing, you know, the, if, it, if the fighters don't fight, the event don't happen. And then we, because this is me, we're a partner. And this very nice work, Scott Cook, he's know this and he works very professionally. Mark? On the last couple of fights that you've had over the past couple of years, you went past the, uh, you went past the second round, you went to the later rounds as well. There was an expectation early on in your career to, that you would finish early. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the idea of the division maybe catching up to you a little bit more and, um, you know, that that part of your game, the, the ability to go into the later rounds and, and to be able to train for that? Usually, every fight, I always train it for six, six rounds. And the whole my career, I always fight for for defend the title and for the title. If you think about it, I, I always the most fight in my career, I do five rounds in five minutes. I know I, I, the fights finish early, but I I always prepare for five rounds. You know, usually I do six rounds or seven rounds every time. You know, for be prepared for for every round and do better. And the one thing I, I have like it's from me genetic thing. When I start training, I'm getting better the, each round, better and better. I mean, do you feel that a lot of these fighters are starting to get a lot better and challenge you a little bit more inside the cage? You know, I respect all my opponents, and I, I know it's almost MMA, it's one new sport, and it, but now it's started a lot of explosion everywhere, but the girls getting better, and you can see a lot of kids, young kids training, mixed martial arts, everything, and it just make me happy to see everyone training. You can see the fights, the girls fight, and get excited and show a lot of improvement. And yes, this is very cool and just going to get it better. 
You've been around 15 years in the sport. Is the interest now so much greater in women's MMA than you have ever known? You know, I feel very blessed blessed to be here this moment, you know, because I know when I started the beginning of my career, I started training, don't have a lot of girls, don't have events, then, then we really would like to put the girls fighting. But I always believe, you know, I was training for maybe one day I can have the opportunity to fight in a big event. And for now, you can see the, the people, people love to watch women's MMA. And I mean, at this moment, I can fight. You know, I feel very blessed this opportunity. And I know after me, it's going to have more and more. They're going to grow and grow. And it's just make me really happy to be part of this story. Do you think women get the enough respect from largely a male audience and male journalists as well. Yes, I believe, I believe, I believe you get respect. I think each time you get more respect if you see, when you see the nice fights the girls put together. And I believe, I believe the beginner, the beginner we don't have the opportunity, but after we have the opportunity, we start show up and show the girls can fight. Now, no, it's not about no respect. They don't have the opportunity. Nadira? Hi, Chris, big fan. I think you look beautiful. Um, Thank you. As one of the most accomplished MMA athletes and champions of our time, how do you find yourself navigating continuously putting on these spectacular and dominant performances and also managing risk to make sure you come out as the winner? You know, uh, I really I really love my job. You know, I think the first thing I feel like uh, when you love your job, you dedicate more the more more you can. And I wake up in the morning every uh, happy and I do, I, I do my training every day. I try to do most training I can. You know, I want to train more than my opponent. This is motivating me every morning. And, and they, of course, all the love to my fans. And, you know, step in the octagon and show, you know, hope for, the, for everyone. And see how hard it is you get something. But you feel, if you continue discipline and training and the believers have, have faith, for sure you're going to get your blast. Just have to continue work hard. Uh, you're one of the most dominant fighters like in the sport. Now with CBS Sports being involved with Bellator and the events showing there, uh, how do you hope women's MMA will be, I guess, broadcasted or uh, covered now that it's on CBS Sports? Uh, I feel very honored to have the opportunity to, to open, you know, the first event at the CBS Network, Sport Network. And I'm happy, you know, for doing my, I'm just going to do what I do always, you know, do my best and, and make the people happy to watch and make people exciting and to be the best third this night with Bellator. Our last question comes from Lenny March. Yeah, so in this interview, a lot of people have talked about you going over to boxing and getting uh, uh, fighting Katie Taylor. But uh, recently, you've said that you'd like to get the cross-promotion fight with Amanda New Nunes. Is that maybe a possibility in the future of cross promotion between the Bellator and UFC? You know, the first thing when I talked to Scott Coker, I knew he can cross over, it can can put Bellator fight to another another event, and this is very cool. And then when I was over there, I was then they don't have the opportunity to give the rematch. They want to give the rematch. Maybe in the future, I think the best promoter is to make the best fight that the fans would like to watch. And I talked to Scott Cook and I said, Chris, I'm open for doing that. And let's see the other side that you like to do. And you're just waiting, you know, and you see what's going to be the next for me. I just have to keep working hard and training and wait to see.